it right now. I feel still emotional, but very happy. A twin without her other half for six months now. How a Uvalde family deep in their grief was still able to celebrate the loved ones still here while honoring those lost at Robb Elementary. And the new details we've learned about a shooting in a parking lot outside of a Walgreens. What we have learned about the victim in that shooting. We've been coming to Mass every Sunday, so it was really nice to see them um, doing the communion all the way. For some, it might be the final step to normalcy after two years of the COVID-19 pandemic, what the full return of Blood of Christ communion means to parishioners. But first, tonight in Uvalde, a birthday bash. Families gathering for food and fun to celebrate Angeli and Anastasia's birthdays. As the night team's Lee Waldman shows us, it's the first without their sister Annabelle, who died at Robb Elementary six months ago. A night to remember and celebrate in Uvalde at the American Legion. Say, I love you, Bobo. It was very great and exciting. It's a blessing to have everybody here with us tonight. Monica Gallegos' daughters, Anastasia and Angeli, are turning 14 and 11, respectively. For Angeli, it's her first birthday without her twin sister, Annabelle. Annabelle. Mom. Annabelle, do you feel like Mom. she's here with you? Mom. Yes. It's a feeling shared by her older sister, Anastasia. My friend had took a picture of me before everything, before he got dressed, and my picture glue, and it was like a red, like a like a yellow, and you could see her face in it. And then earlier this morning, Lydia had told me, "Remember, Belle's always with you." And when I when I saw that, I felt like she was there. Across the pink and blue decorations and the crowd of families laughing and dancing, Annabelle's pictures stand watch. On the back of their shirts, she's smiling with her forever love, Xavier Lopez. Annabelle was my daughter-in-law, still is my daughter-in-law. Um, I felt very special Mommy. that they honored Xavier along with the girls. But I feel very happy and I feel the love. The love the two fourth graders shared remembered forever. The love they have for the ones they left behind the ones they watched dance the night away for Angeli and Anastasia. Lee Waldman, KSAT 12 News. Back here closer to home, new tonight, the victim shot in a parking lot outside of a Walgreens on the west side has now been identified. We've been following this story for you since it began developing early this morning. That victim has been identified as 30-year-old Ricardo Ortega. That's according to the Bear County Medical Examiner's Office. That shooting happened at midnight at the store located on West Commerce Street near South General McMullen. San Antonio police say Ortega was sitting in the car while a family member was inside using the ATM. Gunshots were heard and the family member came outside to find Ortega unresponsive in the car with a gunshot wound. He was taken to a hospital where he later died. Well, the presents were stolen the day after Christmas last year, and now almost a year later, San Antonio police say a clump of the suspect's hair is what finally led to him being charged. 19-year-old Dominic Brinkley was charged with aggravated robbery today. The arrest affidavit states Brinkley, along with his 16-year-old brother, were seen going through the vehicle of a victim who returned from a family outing. The victim caught them allegedly trying to steal presents and ran after them as they drove away in their vehicle. He was able to get a hold of Brinkley, which is when police say the 16-year-old started shooting. The victim was shot in both the biceps, but was able to grab Brinkley's beanie, which had that clump of hair in it. It wasn't until he was arrested for another crime that police were able to link him to this robbery. Now to a scam alert tonight for those of you living in Guadalupe County. Phone scammers are claiming to be Chief Deputy Joshua Ray with the County Sheriff's Office and requesting money. They are telling victims they missed a federal court date. This is a scam according to the actual Guadalupe County Sheriff. They posted about the scam on social media. They are encouraging anyone who has received those calls to not give out any, any information or money and to report that call to their department at 830-379-1224. Some developing stories tonight. A teenager is recovering after being shot while walking home on the northwest side. The shooting happened just after 11 p.m. on Springhurst Drive, not far from Prue and Babcock Roads. San Antonio police say the suspect confronted the teen, and during the altercation, the teen was shot in the arm. He was able to get away and ran towards his home when someone stopped to help him. He was taken to the hospital. Police say the suspect was in a car with five other people. 
but none of them have been found. A burning cigarette caused some significant damage to a home that caught fire early, early this morning over on the east side. Those flames broke out just after 6 a.m. at the home on Hicks Avenue near I-10. The family inside able to get out safely. We spoke with a homeowner who is taking responsibility for that fire. She says she left that cigarette burning and it destroyed items in the home, including paperwork and cell phones. However, at the end of the day, she's grateful no one was hurt. Right there in my room. So it started right there in my room and it just escalated to the front room. There was some damage to the front of the home and smoke damage inside as well. Fire officials say the Red Cross will be providing additional resources to that family. And just like that, Rosario's in Southtown is no more. Today, the owner closed the doors at the restaurant location for good. But don't worry, they plan to open back up at a new location on St. Mary Street. Rosario's on South Alamo has been a staple in the area, staying in that location for 30 years. Bigger and better things are planned for the future. The new location will be 25,000 square feet in a two-story building, which will offer a rooftop terrace. The new location is expected to open mid-December. Today is the first Sunday of Advent, the first of four Sundays before Christmas, and it's a special occasion for some because, as the night team's Alyssa Cole reports, it's the first time Catholics in San Antonio are being offered the full blood of Christ communion during Mass since the beginning of the pandemic. Dozens of people filling the San Fernando Cathedral downtown San Antonio excited to carry out a long-time Catholic ordinance. It feels like we can kind of live again and breathe a little bit, you know, a little bit deeper. It's nice to be getting back into normal, doing the old stuff we used to do back in pre-COVID. They are describing what it's like being part of the Blood of Christ communion during Mass. Once again, the faithful can choose to receive the consecrated wine that represents Christ's blood. The practice was on pause since 2020 due to COVID-19 health concerns. The Archbishop of San Antonio says medical research indicates it's safe to carry out the communion practice again. It's an adjustment even for us to reorganize ourselves and always with the freedom for those who wish to receive it. According to the Center for Disease Control, more than 86% of people in Bear County have received at least one COVID-19 vaccination shot. Church members say they're happy San Fernando Cathedral leadership brought back the full communion in time for Christmas. Well, I think it's great for them to start receiving like the full body of Christ um, to really receive his spirit and to uh, just especially during this time of Advent, it's really great to join with the community. In Advent, we are waiting for Christmas. And so uh, what a great time to get our communities preparing to receive the body and blood of Christ. Yeah, the Archbishop says quite a few people participated today and of course people planning to be a part of future masses. Just know it's not a requirement and it is an option to participate in full communion. Alyssa Cole, Case at 12 News. Thank you, Alyssa. Taking a look outside with live cam here this Sunday night. Clear skies in place over the Alamo City and the vast majority of South Central Texas. All of that helping temperatures to fall pretty efficiently here tonight as well. It's a little chilly when you do step outdoors. Of course, that follows what has been a beautiful weekend across the area. We had those thunderstorms that moved in Friday night and early Saturday. That left more sunshine yesterday and today. Now, yesterday we were seven degrees below the average high. Today, how about nine degrees above the average high for this time of year? Significantly warmer out there this afternoon. Official high here in San Antonio, 77 degrees after starting off chilly at about 40 earlier this morning. Now, temperatures right now here in town in the 50s, 53 over at San Antonio International, 56 at Stinson, 52 at Kelly, and 53 over at Randolph on the east side of town. As we head into the first couple days of the upcoming work week, the humidity is going to build and I really think you're going to notice that by Tuesday morning. Still chilly tomorrow morning, but warmer on Tuesday. That all ahead of our next cold front that looks to blow into South Central Texas Wednesday morning. Not only will that filter in some cooler air in the 50s and 60s for the second half of the work week, but also it's going to kick up a gusty north wind that will make you want to secure those outdoor holiday decorations by midweek as well. We'll have 
have a full look at what to expect on that forecast in just a few. A new week means a new capital murder trial is on the docket, this time for a suspect known as the Border Patrol serial killer. Juan David Ortiz is accused of killing four women in the Laredo area four years ago. The trial was moved to Bear County from Webb County after the judge granted a venue change. Tomorrow we will be live streaming that trial gavel to gavel on KSAT.com, KSAT Plus and on our KSAT YouTube channel. To learn more about the events leading to Ortiz's arrest, you can watch our open court special right now on our website. Still ahead on the night beat, that investigation into the mass shooting at a Walmart in Virginia now complete. The latest details and how soon the store where five employees died will be reopened to the public. Plus, it's not only a place for an animal shelter, but also a place to grieve. We'll introduce you to the owner of Homebound Babies Ranch and why her deceased son is the inspiration behind it. And family gatherings create the perfect situation for viruses to spread how the threat of a triple demic could impact an already stressed healthcare system. Hospitals and urgent care centers are bracing for a possible triple demic threat, COVID-19, RSV, and the flu. Yeah, health experts fear travel and large family gatherings for the holidays could lead to an even bigger rise in cases. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze breaks down the numbers that show the strain on the healthcare system is already there. With wait times at many children's emergency rooms hours long, some urgent care centers are overflowing with pediatric patients. About 78% of the country's estimated 40,000 pediatric hospital beds are currently in use. Health experts say decreased immunity may be one contributing factor to this season's early spike of pediatric respiratory virus infections. A lot of virus circulating in communities, some of the busiest travel days in the last few years, and all mitigations have been lifted. So people need to be on the lookout. There could be a lot more sickness around the corner. Some hospitals already overwhelmed with multiple respiratory illnesses as flu cases are also on the rise. Child after child, we're doing the swab, we're getting the test and it's coming back positive for flu. The CDC reports more than half of U.S. states are experiencing high or very high flu-like activity. Meantime, the CDC reports COVID-19 deaths are still averaging more than 2,000 per week. Nearly 70 percent of Americans have received the initial two doses of the COVID vaccine, but only 12 percent have gotten the updated booster. The White House's Dr. Ashish Jha says vaccines will help everyone move on from the pandemic. We think it's incredibly important as we head into the holidays for people to update their immunity, get the new COVID vaccine, get the flu shot. It's a great way to stay safe and healthy this holiday season. He also recommends basic respiratory hygiene, measures that became commonplace during the pandemic, such as avoiding those who are sick, washing your hands and cleaning surfaces. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. It took a while, but the sun found its way back to South Texas. Yeah, it really did. And now I guess we have to put up our holiday decorations because we really don't have an excuse. I'm not like Tim, not like the go-getter who does it early. I'm just like, oh, okay, I guess it's almost December. I should start doing it. All in like due time. Going. Yes, absolutely. Yesterday probably wasn't the best day to get out on the ladder just because it was so windy outside. We had gusts upwards of 30 to 35 miles per hour at times. But today was absolutely beautiful across South Central Texas. Plenty of sunshine, very wide degree temperature spread from this morning compared to this afternoon, thanks to the dry air still in place. But yes, all of that sunshine was generally a very big theme of this weekend's plans. I do think we'll find more of that as we head into tomorrow afternoon as well. 53 degrees, the temperature over at San Antonio International here this 10 p.m. hour, a dew point of 44, west northwest wind at about seven miles per hour. Still clear skies in place, and I do think for the majority of the overnight hours, we will hold on to those clear skies. However, because grounds are still somewhat saturated in spots, thanks to the rain that we saw Friday night and early Saturday morning, and those winds are still expected to be pretty light through the overnight hours as well. Before the sun comes up tomorrow morning, can't completely rule out a few clouds trying to mix in and maybe some isolated areas of patchy fog, especially across our far southern 
counties and we'll also monitor that across portions of the hill country stretching over to the I-35 corridor. If we do find any of that to develop, it does look to break up and scatter out a bit more through the morning hours, leaning way to mostly sunny skies as we head into our Monday afternoon plans. Tomorrow, very much like what we saw out there today, is going to be a layering day. It'll be chilly in the morning, so you want the extra layer stepping out for the morning drive, but you're not going to need it by the afternoon hour. So we'll see those temperatures fall once again into the 40s here in San Antonio. Around 44 is that wake up temperature early tomorrow morning. Some upper 30s possible across portions of the hill country as well. 41 in Hondo early tomorrow, 43 in Poteet. Same over in Floresville in Wilson County. Again, if we do find some partly cloudy skies out there, at least across portions of south central Texas, we'll see more of that sunshine return into the afternoon, helping those temperatures warm around 62 by 11 a.m., 70 by 2 p.m. We've got a forecast high pointed around 73 degrees here in San Antonio by tomorrow afternoon. So still pleasant when you are stepping outdoors. Now we've had that drier air, lower humidity values in place today, but unfortunately that's not going to stick with us, adding to that comfortable factor over the next 48 hours as we start to see some changes work back in. There's an area of high pressure at the surface closer to the Texas Panhandle. That's one of the reasons why the majority of the Lone Star State is pretty quiet out there tonight. That's essentially going to move eastward here into Monday and Tuesday as well. And what that means for us here in South Central Texas is we start to see those winds turn back in from the southeast, which is going to allow more of that Gulf moisture to work its way back into the region. So especially by Tuesday morning, Morning. That's where I think you're really going to notice that more muggy feel stepping outside. It's also going to be pretty warm out there. Remember, tomorrow morning we're waking up in the 40s. Tuesday morning in the upper 50s and low 60s. We'll see the cloud cover work back in as well. Maybe some areas of patchy fog and drizzle not completely out of the question. Those temperatures climb into the 70s yet again. But here come those changes. By Wednesday morning, our next cold front works its way into south central Texas thanks to an area of low pressure tracking eastward across the lower 48. That essentially is going to drop that boundary into our region Wednesday morning and behind it. Yes, cooler air helping those temperatures once again return to a more festive feel in the 50s by Wednesday afternoon, but it's also going to kick up a very healthy north wind. Right now this is showing about 30 miles per hour, but I think even gusts upwards of 35 miles per hour will be possible there. So that's something to think about for those outdoor holiday decorations and then those temperatures slowly but surely start to warm again as we head into next weekend, guys. It's not Christmas till Santa goes tumbling down the street. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Gonna say, do you have the inflatables? I do not have okay, inflatables. Okay, I didn't think so. But I've seen them. I like to see them fly. <laughs> That'd be fun too. All right, Greg Simmons will be along with a preview of Instant Replay right after this. UTSA Roadrunners have finally cracked the top 25 in college football in the latest AP rankings after a school record comeback to end the regular season. With more on that and what's on Instant Replay, let's check in with Greg Simmons. Yeah, they were down 24 to nothing when they started that rally. That's an incredible comeback. And tonight we go one-on-one -on -one with a new face of the Spurs franchise, Kelton Johnson, coming up tonight on a brand new edition of Instant Replay. 29-yard attempt. The kick is up and it is good. After being down 24 to nothing to the University of Texas at El Paso, the UTSA Roadrunners rallied to beat UTEP at the biggest comeback in school history while going undefeated in Conference USA play for the first time as well. And now we get ready to pack the Alamo Dome for the Conference USA Championship game. We'll get you ready for the big showdown. The University of the Incarnate Word will put their number seven seed on the line when they host Furman in the second round of the FCS playoffs this Saturday in Benson Stadium. We'll get you ready for that game as well. And Texas State fires their head football coach. A lot of people asking you, like, uh, is it a lot of pressure? And uh, for me, I was, it's like, it's, it's hard for me to have a lot of pressure on me when I got such great teammates. 
And tonight we go one on one with Keldon Johnson. Does he mind being the new face of the franchise? Finally traded DeJounte Murray to the Atlanta Hawks. Find out about that and what he and his teammates like to do off the court. All that plus a new number one team in 12's top 12. And should the Cowboys sign wide receiver Odell Beckham Jr.? Tonight you decide. Instant replay is live and is right after the night beat. Still looking for a place to land. Yes, he is. <laughs> in more ways than one, yes. if you know what I mean. Thank you, Greg. Yeah, you got it. All right, still ahead of the night beat. What looks like an animal shelter to you is also a life-saving shelter to others. Why this not only includes the animals that live there, but the woman who created it. And it is time for the mass exodus back home after Thanksgiving weekend. See what travelers dealt with today so you can know what to expect around Christmas time. And we know the suspect, we know the motive, and now it's time for a grieving city to move forward after the deadly mass shooting at a Walmart in Virginia what that state is doing to help the victim's families next.